Hello friends, this video on human reproduction part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to talk about fertilization. The most important phase or the most vital, vital step of the process of sexual reproduction. So this is the step where we'll actually see the male gamete and the female gamete fusing with each other to form the zygote. So what is fertilization? Fusion of sperm and ovum. So by now we know that the sperm is formed, the ovum is formed. We also know what is the right time uh, when a fusion can happen between a sperm and ovum. So in case of human beings, fertilization is internal because this fusion takes place inside the body, inside the female body. So it is internal fertilization, whereas there are certain animals where the fertilization is external. Both the male and the female uh, gametes are released outside their body and then they fuse outside. So that is external fertilization. So here where exactly it occurs inside the female body, it occurs in the ampulla region of the fallopian tube. So if you see the egg which gets released from here, it reaches the ampulla region. This is infundibulum and this wider portion is the ampulla region of the fallopian tube. So even the sperm enters through the vaginal opening and it finally travels to reach this place. So this is the place where both of them meet occurs only if ovum and sperm reaches ampulla at the same time. So both of them have to reach there at the same time. Not only that, both of them need to be alive. As I told, the ovum released from the ovary, after that it remains alive for around 24 hours. A couple of hours here and there, maybe, more or less. So during that duration itself, the ovum needs to meet the sperm in the ampulla region. So only if they both meet at that particular time, the fusion is possible. Otherwise, there can there will be no fertilization at all. So now, one important thing to be noted here is the sperm is haploid and the ovum is also haploid. So that when both of them come fused together, they form something diploid. So this is how the egg come, is released and this is how the sperms come in and this is where the fertilization takes place. So now let us talk about the fertilization in more detail. So what happens? Now I have magnified this region in order to focus more on the ampulla part because that is where the process of fertilization takes place. So what happens? Ovum comes from the ovary to the fallopian tube by ovulation. So the release of ovum from ovary is ovulation. So once it is ovulated, it reaches the fallopian tube. So this is how it happens. You, can, you saw in the animation. Now what happens? The sperm enters through vagina and reaches the fallopian tube. So the vagina is here. So the sperm will enter through the vagina and then it will reach the fallopian tube here. That was where it has to reach. And then the sperm will enter the egg. Now what do we mean by fusion actually? What happens in fusion? Now what happens is that the sperm enters inside the egg and we say that the egg is fertilized and we say fusion has taken place. Fusion means what? It means mixing of two things. So when the sperm and the egg gets mixed together, that is called fusion. So the sperm will actually enter inside the egg. Now there are quite a few interesting things that you might be interested in knowing. That how the sperm can enter inside the egg. Now this is where you will actually understand the significance of learning the structure of the sperm and the ovum because now you will see that how it can actually enter. So this is how the sperm will come and it will reach inside the ovum and we say that the egg is fertilized. So the fusion of the nucleus of sperm and ovum is actually fertilization. Now the sperm has a nucleus, you saw, right? A big nucleus in the head region. The ovum has a nucleus, right? The one which we call as the germinal vesicle. Both of them has got the genetic material in the nucleus. The nucleus of both sperm and ovum will fuse together and that is actually fertilization. So now the question is how the fusion occurs between sperm and ovum. How exactly the sperm enters inside the ovum and then fusion of the nuclei take place. So that is what we will focus on here. So let us see how exactly the fusion happens between the sperm and the ovum. 
Now, typically what happens is the sperm comes in contact with the zona pellucida layer of ovum. You remember the outer protective layer of ovum, the zona pellucida layer, which is the thick layer formed immediately after fertilization? Yes, I'm talking about that layer. So the sperm will come in contact with the zona pellucida layer and then the sperm has its head. You remember the head has a cap which is called acrosome and the acrosome has certain enzymes. And what do these enzymes do? These enzymes help in hydrolysis. Okay, now when the sperm comes in contact with zona pellucida, the, actually which portion of the sperm comes in contact with it? The head, obviously. So the acrosome comes in contact with zona pellucida. Now the enzymes in the acrosome help the sperm to burrow into the ovum cytoplasm. Now how can it burrow? That's because the enzymes which are there, they are all hydrolyzing enzymes. So they are able to hydrolyze the um, membranes of the ovum and that is how the sperm is able to burrow in. So here you can see this is the sperm initially it came in contact. Gradually it kept on increasing you see this part is the acrosome and the acrosome reaction is taking place and that is why it is able to pierce through the membranes and that is how it is able to enter into the cytoplasm. Now the sperm's plasma fuses with the ovum's plasma membrane. So if you see the plasma membrane of the sperm and the ovum they fuse together and then what happens the sperm head disconnects from the tail so the sperm will actually enter inside and then it will get disconnected with the tail so the sperm will the head will enter inside and the tail will remain outside and when this happens, the fertilized ovum reaches down the fallopian tube to the uterus. Now, as soon as the sperm head entered inside the cytoplasm of the ovum, we say that the egg is fertilized because now both of them are inside the same cytoplasm. So the nucleus of the sperm will actually fuse with the nucleus of the ovum and fertilization will take place. So basically here, acrosome plays a very important role because the enzymes present in acrosomes actually help the sperm to burrow in or to hydrolyze the membranes of the egg. So this is how the sperm enters into the ovum. So that is one thing. So this is how it happens. Let us suppose this is the ovum. So this is the ovum and this is let us suppose the outermost layer of the ovum, the corona radiata and then you have the zona pellucida. So all those layers are there outside. Now see there are so many sperms. Um, actually you will be surprised to know that a human male secretes millions of sperms. But a good percentage of them are not healthy enough. That means some of them are non-motile. Some of them do not have proper structure so they are not healthy so even then even if half of them are healthy so that is also a huge number so huge number of sperms actually enter inside the body of the female but since they need to travel all through the vaginal uh, area and then the uterus reaching the fallopian tube so many of them actually are lost in between so they are just dead in between so only a few can actually reach near the ovum now let us assume this scenario where you have the ovum here and there are so many sperms surrounding it so what happens let us suppose one of these sperms which could actually make its way through the uh, membrane of the ovum that is it enters inside now once the head enters inside what happens the chemical reaction takes place or with the enzymes which are present on the acrosome and as a result the membrane of the ovum it changes so that there are some chemical changes in the membrane of the ovum which tells which does not allow other sperms to enter further otherwise you might ask that why is it not possible that hundred sperms enter and fertilize the ovum that is not possible one sperm entered inside the ovum, it will make some chemical reactions and as a result, the membrane will undergo some chemical changes which will tell other sperms not to enter or which will actually forbid other sperms from entering inside. So once this sperm head has entered, what happens? The others lost their opportunity, now they cannot enter. Now this head will actually enter inside the ovum, the fusion will take place and it gets disconnected from with its tail and then we say that fertilization has taken place. Now the question is what is the result of fertilization? So what do we get at the end of fertilization? 
Okay, so fertilization leads to the formation of a single cell and that single cell is called zygote. Now, another important point to be noted here is fertilization happened between the sperm and the ovum and both of them were haploid. So both haploid cells fused together to form a diploid cell. So this zygote is a diploid cell. However, it is just one cell. As soon as it is formed, it is just one cell. But this one cell undergoes repeated divisions, repeated mitotic divisions and as a result of mitotic division, diploidy remains the same. Diploid will remain diploid but the number of cells keep on increasing from 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 16 and so on. And these div divisions keep taking place very rapidly. And because of these div divisions, first initially division, so many cells will be formed, the divisions will be followed by differentiation, where a group of cells will differentiate to fo form some special tissues. Tissues will differentiate to form a special organ and that is how different organs and organ systems are formed in the fetus and that is how a baby is formed inside the uterus. So this is what happened. The sperm and the ovum, they fused together so a zygote was formed and if you see the zygote was formed here right and gradually this zygote keep on moving towards the uterus but at the same time it keeps on undergoing uh, divisions because of this you see here it was single cell then two cells then more cells so the cell division is happening simultaneously and finally when this it when it enters inside the uterus it gets attached to the uterus and this attachment to the uterus is known as implantation so we will speak about implantation we'll discuss it in more detail implantation part so here so how much time do you think it takes for the embryo to reach from here till here so it takes around four to five days to enter into the uterus so from here till the uterus will take some four five days thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.